Heroes in Pokemon can reshape a trainer's entire journey, but Horizons goes a step further. In the Ash era, the Sinnoh region is a land of countless stories of the Pokemon world dating back to the creation period, spearheaded by the one true Arceus. Gen 4 to this day has enough legends and mythology throughout Pokedex entries, in-game libraries, and movies to satisfy any trainer's thirst for knowledge of the origins and folklore of Pokemon days past. Now, some legends could have been left in the concept phase, but this region could use as many fire types as possible. Help! Help! Help me! Help! That being said, whether it be discovered through ancient ruins or even passed down family talismans, these stories of powerful creatures that ruled over the land with incredible abilities will always be a highlight whenever a new generation is introduced. So when it comes to the Paldea region with time travel at the forefront, we see Paradox Pokemon emerge from the mysterious place known as Area Zero. The Scarlet and Violet games provide breadcrumbs that lead to bigger reveals in the anime. Midway through the current Terrastal arc, information is being told about the Expedition Survey Team and the encountering of Terrapicas by one of the members. But as grand of a tale as this is shaping out to be, the Area Zero slash Paradox Pokemon plot takes a back seat to something, someone a bit more interesting. The Ancient Adventurer aka Lucas a figure that has been constantly shown in very brief but key moments in the series. Ironically how elusive they made this character, in the first episode he's the narrator setting the tone before our fearless leader Liko sets out on her journey. This world is filled with Pokemon. Your future awaits. This isn't always the case, but I have to side with the English dub voice actor Steve Bloom over on Netflix versus his Japanese counterpart, who isn't bad, but the English VA has a more gritty and defined tone, similar to Escanor from the Seven Deadly Sins. Now, does Lucas have a golden battle axe? No, but an always terrestrialized shiny Rayquaza can do some damage. And we saw that firsthand in episode 33, when Amethio Surreal Edge landed a direct hit, which did nothing, then promptly got put down with the swiftness. Oh, this is a sticky situation. Big fella can't be stopped. Yeah, I'm probably gonna go ahead and retire. This is really a testament to the caliber of trainer Lucas is. To command a Pokemon this powerful, one must go beyond the rank of champion and enter a tier we haven't seen before in the anime. The first Lucas sighting was in episode 6 from a dream that Roy had. As the series progresses, we go from still images to full on holograms. At the time of this video, we still haven't seen Lucas in the flesh, but from all the information gathered, there's a few things we know for certain. I am so glad we debunked the Liko is Ash's daughter theory. Now we can talk about her real family lineage. I give you the Liko family tree. <laughs> Now Lucas fits into this before Diana, but the biggest question is how far back? The closest hint we have actually comes from his Pokemon team. I'll say this right now, but his team during a standard playthrough is one-shotting any and everything. Shiny Rayquaza, Galarian Maltrace, Terrapagus, Arbavala, Lapras, shout out to Ganto. But the two standouts is Entei and Cleavor. We'll come back to Johto, but let's go to Hisui. The only way I can see Lucas having not only Pokemon of different regions, but also different time periods, is he has access to Area Zero, which raises a bigger question is, why do you need to assemble such an OP team? Who and what is the threat? Because those Pokemon are not sitting around in the PC. With the recent reveal of Master Gaiben and his shiny 10% Zygarde, there is no coincidence that these two have shiny legendary Pokemon and one happens to be the antagonist. Now, how powerful Master Gaiben's full team is, one can only imagine. Personally, I'm hoping for a Shadow Lugia, but we'll see. Now, let's head to Route 36. Johto's royalty, Entei, somehow made it into the Gen 9 anime, and I'm here for it. Even though we got the Paradox forms from the Scarlet and Violet games, them choosing to go with the OG form as far as right now was a nice surprise. A Pokemon we haven't seen since the original series where one flamethrower subsided a whole tornado when Ash and crew in their combined Pokemon had no effect. A trainer's team is a reflection of themselves 
And what we have here with Lucas is something we haven't seen before. We still only have small bits of information of his purpose in the grand scheme of things, but I think his role is of the utmost importance when it comes to Liko in her development as a trainer. Now, I see it every day on every platform. There is a lot of people and their Jirachis wishing for the return of Ash. But in the words of a previously beloved franchise, that boy is our last hope. No, there is another. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see y'all in the next video. Peace.